Welcome to Cat Chat alongside Bryce Burge. I'm Pete Francis, and we've got a great show for you today. Zach Nichols will be our in-studio guest. And Bryce, the Wildcat football team rallied and put up a good fight against Grand Valley State, but it was too little too late for the Cats. Yeah, um, the Cats got down early after the Lakers put up 17 points in the first quarter, and the Cats weren't able to put up a score until the end of the second um, when Bradshaw got a reception right underneath the goalpost for a touchdown, but then tr more trouble arose when uh, the Belmonte extra point attempt was blocked and the Lakers were able to run it back to put up two. Um, but then in the second half, the Wildcats came alive. And it was carried mostly through their passing game, which was huge. They went 16, 26, and 1 uh, for 156 yards, which really came in to help balance out the basically zero rushing attack that we had. We only had 41 rushing yards. But uh, it was good because we were able to keep the Lakers starters in for the majority of the game um, because I, uh, Brad Isaac, their starting quarterback, didn't put in the final touchdown until two minutes and eight seconds to go. And uh, they held their own but still lost 31-19. This team probably isn't too interested in moral victories, Bryce, but the way they played in the second half and competed at a very tough place to play at Grand Valley really shows how far this team has come since last year. It really has. This, this was the perfect case of standing up to adversity that comes throughout the storyline of the game. And the, uh, the defense stood up. They were able to get the hard hits and the solid play that they've been missing the last couple of losses against Hillsdale and Finlay and was really kind of what built up the team in the first games. Um, also, we learned how to compete through the passing game, which has never been a real strong point ever since uh, Buddy Rivera left, um, but it's good, le uh, good lessons to learn for later. All right, Bryce, last game of the season coming up Saturday at home versus Indianapolis. How do you see this one unfolding? I see this one as a big win for the Wildcats. A senior day, last game of the season, and the Greyhounds haven't proven themselves on the road with the exception of a 34-7 win at Ferris State, who hasn't had the best of the season. Uh, the Greyhounds are 4-6 and six overall, and they like to keep their play with solid D. But after only 41 rushing yards, and this being Boussois' last game, I really see the rushing attack just running over them. Um, also paired up with that passing game that has established itself th you know, through the games at Finlay, Hillsdale, and Grand Valley, I really expect them to not really be preparing for the rushing attack. It will open up some doors and some lanes, and I'm picking us to win 48-7 to in the Dome. Nathan Yelk and that defense should be fired up as well with oh, his yeah. last game. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'll be joined by NMU receiver Zach Nichols. Stay tuned. Can't get enough of Northern Michigan athletics? Well, you're in luck because Cat Chat is Northern Michigan University's new television sports show, featuring highlights, recap, analysis, and interviews with all your favorite Wildcat players. Join us Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on Marquette Channel 20, or follow us online at catchattv.org as we bring you the latest in Wildcat sports. Cat Chat, the UP's number one sports show. <laughs> Welcome back. Joining us now is NMU wide receiver Zach Nichols. Zach, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, last year the team went 2-8. and eight. If you guys beat Indianapolis this Saturday, it'll be the, fir the team's first winning season in a very long time. How important is it for this program to do that? Um, it's huge for the program. I mean, not only for the seniors to go out on a, you know, a winning, winning note, but also I think just for, you know, it's a, it's a small stepping stone in what this program should achieve in years to come, I think that you know having a winning season is extremely important for when you go in the off season and start working out and those guys hopefully can you know pick up where we left off and hopefully keep getting better and better yeah how has the season gone so far in terms of your expectations at the beginning of the year 
Well, I mean, I go into every season, you know, wanting to be 10 and 0 and win a national championship. So obviously, the season hasn't gone to any of our expectations. I mean, we knew we'd have some tough games, but I think we all expected to do a lot better than we did. However, this is a lot better than what we're used to and what we've done in the past. Yeah. After four years of playing in the GLIAC, what's been your favorite stadium to play in other than the Dome? That's, I think uh, that's a toss up for me between Grand Valley and Wayne State. Uh, Wayne State because it's so close to home and I had a lot of family there and a lot of friends and that was a really important game to me but the atmosphere you get at Grand Valley, you know, is as close to a Division One game as a lot of guys have ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, you've been growing your hair out this season. What's the story behind that? Uh, it all started with Anthony Leandri, Zach Pearson, and Matt Ford. We decided to grow our hair out. Um, we, we call them flows. And we decided to grow it out for the whole season, starting back in the winter. And it kind of just stuck and kind of became our trademark. Okay. I've asked all the seniors that have come on the show what their most memorable game has been. What's yours? My most memorable game would have to be this year when we beat Tech. It was just a complete team victory. I think we had, you know, uh, two different running backs score, two receivers score. Carter, Mudder, I don't know if he ran one in or not, but I'm sure he did. And defense played a complete game, so that was a memorable game. Plus winning the Miners Cup for my last game ever against Tech is, was pretty important. Yeah. Uh, how about your most memorable play of your career? My most memorable play would be my first touchdown at Saginaw my freshman year. Uh, my dad was there to see it, and so were, I think, all my sisters and my brother. So that was, that was a pretty cool moment. Well, this Saturday is your last game as a Wildcat. How much does this game mean to you? I don't think I could uh, explain how much this game means to me. It's obviously going to be pretty emotional. Um, a senior is going out as one of the first winning groups in a while. I'm going to have my grandparents there, my mom and my dad my older sister, my younger brother, and my Uncle Brian, and uh, his kids, Jacob and Karen. So it's going to be a pretty emotional game for me. You've had a great career at Northern. What are your plans for after college? Well, I got a few different plans, but I think I'm going to try to keep playing somehow, somewhere, uh, see how that goes. And if not, I'm going to go back to school and either try to become a physical therapist or a veterinarian. Well, Zach, thanks a lot for coming on the show today. Best of luck this Saturday, and best of luck uh, the rest of the way for your career. Thanks for having me on. All right, that's Zach Nichols. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, Sean Kelly and Nick Mancosi will be here to talk the latest about the NMU hockey team. Stay with us. What's up, everybody? This is Mike Handled with your Wildcat Sports Update. The women's volleyball team fell to Michigan Tech on Saturday by a score of three sets to two. NMU won the first and third sets by the scores of 25 to 14 and 25 to 23. Michigan Tech won the second, fourth, and final sets by the scores of 19 to 25, 19 to 25, and 7 to 15. The loss ends the Wildcats' five-game winning streak. The swimming and diving team opened their season on Saturday at Hillsdale, but they fell to the Chargers by a score of 135 to 90. Also on Saturday, the women's soccer team ended the, their season with a 1-0 win over the Ashland Eagles. Dana Stevens scored the game's only goal, and Kara Music ended her regular season with a career and school record of 21 shutouts. This is Mike Handled. You've just been updated. Hi, I'm Zach Nichols from the Northern Michigan football team, and you're watching Cat Chat. 